Uh, next up will be uh, Rupertus Rotenhäuser. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, he will be here and he will talk about his company, Crypto Finance. Welcome. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, my name is Ruptus Rodenhäuser. I'm heading the brokerage division for uh, Crypto Finance AG. Crypto Finance AG, for all those of you not familiar with us, is a, a B2B service provider in the digital asset space based in Zurich. We have three um, silos of business activity. One is an asset management division where we have launched our own crypto fund. The other one is the crypto brokerage where we provide trading, execution, and settlement for crypto assets to institutional participants. And finally, we are as well a financial infrastructure provider in the field of storage and tokenization, again, for the institutional space. Now, over the last couple of years, I would almost say, um, I have been visiting quite a number of clients, mainly banks, financial institutions, in order to find out what is their appetite when it comes to digital assets. Um, the, the market has been driven predominantly by two facts. The one is a well, rather lax uh, monetary policy within the central banks. And I would like to recall that 20% of all US dollars in circulation have been launched last year in 2020. So there's certainly a trend that the money becomes lesser and lesser worth, and we call it inflation. And on the other side, there's the upcoming rise of digital assets in the use of technology by blockchain and DeFi space. So the combination out of two offers to banks and financial institutions, corporates, um, a variety of alternatives. May it be in their proprietary um, asset allocation? Should I become uh, part of the crypto space? should I play a role in the so-called tokenization process of assets? And I would like to guide you through some of the aspects we've been witnessing in the last couple of months. First of all, moving into the crypto space, we are still kind of at the beginning. If you compare market cap of Bitcoin, market cap of crypto space as such, in comparison to alternative asset classes, it's still quite small. It looks tremendous for us because we are sitting in the middle of the space and I guess a lot of the participants and visitors and, and, and audience of this conference um, knows a lot about the space, but there are a hell of a lot of people who have no idea what we're talking about. And if you look at the crypto market size at 1.7 trillion, that is just short of Apple. So we are not even as big in a market space as one single US corporate. Um, and you see, if you go look into the other numbers for global money supply, did global debt or the derivatives market, there is a hell of a lot of growth potential for us. However, you see it in the top graph, the importance of Bitcoin in a extraordinary rising crypto market is quite stable. So with a small reduction of just 5% within one year, Bitcoin has become or has remained kind of the, the, the dominant cryptocurrency when it comes to the crypto market. However, said that, um, we at the crypto broker see a lot of days where, in the meanwhile, Ether is the much more demanded and requested product compared to Bitcoin. Now, where does it leave us? We have um, a variety of different token styles, and every token has its purpose. Um, as you may know, um, the probably easiest one in terms of regulatory uh, approval as much as regulatory background and transparency is the cryptocurrency space, where I guess around the world there is some kind of easy regulatory background compared to the quite complex stuff in when it comes to utility or more importantly to security tokens. Um, especially on security tokens, every country translating their proprietary securities law, issuance of securities, trading of securities, storage and custody of securities is quite complex. 
And in order to have this as transparent and public and open as possible, a lot of laws need to be changed. Securities law, wet papier gazettes, um, storage law, even private law is touched when it comes to the securities tokens. So it's not a surprise that the various uh, variations of coins and tokens have various, I would say, impact on the market so far. Of course, in the crypto space, it's pretty liquid. It happens everywhere. It's a cross-global business, and a lot of participants are active. And very important to mention, a lot of retail investors are driving the space. And the institutionals, and that's, forget, don't forget, that's the topic of my presentation. The institutions, the financial institutions, need to find a, an answer how to interact um, and engage in the space in order not to lose out, not only short term, but maybe once you miss the boat completely, it suddenly is gone and will never come back. So crypto space, you know, uh, utility tokens gives you an access or the beneficiary of, of a good security tokens. And there are a number of initiatives of security exchanges happening as well. And most recently, the NFT space has come up where you get ownership of a specific unique good on chain. Now, the good thing is you have with the crypto stuff quite an uncorrelated product. Um, it gives you diversification in terms of interest rates. If you don't want to pay penalty interest rates on your assets with your broker or with your bank, move it into stable coins or move it into the crypto space and suddenly you have much more alternative in receiving and gaining yield exposure rather than paying out a penalty interest rate. Um, it's uncorrelated to other asset classes. On the right little box you see um, how the Crypto Market Index 10, which is an index that Crypto Finance Group is, has launched and the Swiss um, exchange is calculating the index on a daily basis is completely uncorrelated to all the other asset classes. So if you want to bring stabilization into your product portfolio, you need to be in the crypto space. The entire space of blockchain is going to give a disruptive part of the new businesses. You cannot negligate that if clients of yours coming to your bank, to your insurance company, to your broker, to your neo broker, to your asset manager and demands the access into tokenized products or into cryptocurrencies, how long can you reject these requests to your clients before the client says, well, if my bank doesn't want to give me the service, I might go to another bank who does offer me the service. Um, cryptos are decoupled from central banks, as I mentioned earlier on. Um, if the inflationary tendencies over the last couple of months will continue, you should really consider moving your money into another asset class that is not depending so much on, 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 on um, central banks' money market policies. And finally, um, we are in transformation period. A lot of businesses which are now running in a certain process since 30, 40, 50 years will come to an end because there will be a revolutionary transformation in the space. It's not going to happen overnight, but that's why you need to have strategy to be part of it when it happens. When I spoke to most of these financial institutions two years ago, they looked at me in complete disbelief and they asked me, Ruptos, why? Why would I enter into the tokenization space? What does it bring me? Oh, do I, does it mean I have to stop trading on Xetra? Can I trade my equity further on on an alternative exchange? Said, well, no, it doesn't go that fast. It doesn't go that quick. It's a long process. And guess what? At the beginning, it might even increase your cost in a bank because you have to maintain two alternative routes, classic exchange, tokenized assets. In the future, market and client flows will decide which of the two models is superior, which one is inferior, where do I gain efficiency, where do I gain speed, where do I reduce operational risk, what can replace the other, or will there be a parallel market forever? But those banks have mentioned in the past, 
Well, cryptocurrencies is an investment class. Bitcoin is going to be mainstream, uh, mega trends in digitalization, but nobody really showed an effort in terms of transacting and doing something concrete. Now that has changed. In 2021, it seems somebody has suddenly flipped the coin and said, now let's go into action models. Suddenly, Morgan Stanley acquires 10% of MicroStrategy, one of the biggest Bitcoin investors on the planet. Goldman Sachs decided to set up their own crypto derivatives trading desk within their FX team. Um, BNY Mellon, who I have visited many, many times, and they were always quite resistant, suddenly turns around and says, you know what? We've done our analysis, we believe in the space, <coughs> and we want to be part of it. And they, in the meanwhile, they, they do not only store and manage Bitcoin as a topic, they have invested as one of the lead investors in Fireblocks, um, one of the biggest storage providers, and you can see those big banks moving into the space. It's the first step, and interestingly enough, most of them come from the storage and custody part and to a lesser degree from the trading and execution part. Um, but this is, I guess, just the first step. The entire space is so fundamentally changing the planet, where on the one side, financial markets and global banking will change, clearing settlement, loan syndication, <coughs> excuse me. On the other side, transaction banking will change. Each of those components there is a solution on chain, on blockchain, to make it faster, more efficient, less cumbersome. I give you one example. For example, um, loan syndication, trade finance. If you are a bank and you finance a new um, windmill park in the North Sea uh, in order to produce environmental friendly energy, there's a specific process how the financing is happening, from which milestones onwards funds are released, <coughs> invoices are paid, until suddenly the wind park is, is ready to go. All of these initiatives require hundreds and hundreds of pages and documents and papers and release cycles and payment instructions and checking and balancing. All of this can be digitalized. All of this can be digitalized, and uh, it is so much space that can be occupied here that it needs only a bank to suddenly do the final step and do it. We need to move from a centralized business on the left-hand side <coughs> into an ecosystem approach on the one-hand side. And those products eventually will increase revenues. It will create revenues for banks which are currently not there. It will create create cost efficiencies, i.e. you save money, you become more efficient, you can reduce your stuffing. There's a lot you can do, but it needs to have a strategy in order to say, I want to be part of that game, I, want, I believe in the structural changes of, of digital assets, and what is my first step? Is it tr crypto? Is it trading? Is it storage? Is it tokenization? Do I want to issue my next bond issuance as a tokenized asset or rather as a classic one? Do I want to propose to my corporate client when he does his next capital rights issue on the stocks? Do we want to do it in a digital format? There's enough area where you could grow and see and test the, the environment in order to see the acceptance. I'm, I, I want to repeat, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, there's a lot of regulatory and legal challenges still uh, ahead of us, but the technology and the market demand and the market request is, is ever increasing. And that's why it is quite logical that every bank eventually needs a digital asset strategy. We are in this kind of cycle somewhere in the middle. There are first initiatives, sandboxes, tokenization, projects. Um, there are as well crypto trading facilities. We see a tremendous growth in our crypto execution over the last 12 months. It's a phased approach. Bank needs to get familiar with it. They need to feel safe. They want to make sure that everything is working according to the law. They want to make sure that any money laundering and, 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 and rogue trading is prohibited. And it's all about trust. And as soon as this trust level is reached, um, I'm pretty much sure 
that we're going to see a tremendous future in the cryptocurrency and digital asset space. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention, and uh, I hope you have a beautiful another one and a half days. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much for this enlightening talk. Um, if you want to, you can uh, stay here for some questions. Sure. Uh, because you seem to have inspired uh, at least one of our, our viewers, oh. um, because uh, he or she asks, what would be the best starting point for a retail investor, uh, in your opinion? For a retail investor? Yeah. For a retail investor... Wait, do you... Um Should I take this one? Yeah. Do you see this microphone? Um, a retail investor who wants to invest into tokenized assets or into, into cryptos? Well, there's two things. If you are a retail investor, um, either you find a bro if, and you're interested in the cryptocurrency space, you either go to one of the crypto brokers and open a retail account, or you go to your classic bank where you can probably access um, um, cryptocurrency structured products, certificates, ETPs, ETNs, ETCs. They're listed on the Stuttgart Stock Exchange, they're listed on Xetra, they're listed on various exchanges. So getting access into the crypto space as a retail customer is fairly easy. If you want to enter the space in terms of the digital assets, it's probably not yet really possible for retailers because first the banks need to bring their act together. Yeah, I expected that. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this, um, yeah, for again elaborating. Um, are, there, uh, have there, are there further questions uh, arising in the meantime? Otherwise, uh, I will thank you again, thank Mr. Wittenhäuser, for um, this talk. It was great, thank you. I think.